Hey there, Son of Peeps, Henry here. How's it going? Today we're going to go over hemodialysis vascular axis. We're going to talk about arterial venous fistulas and arterial venous grafts. Hemodialysis axis grafts and fistulas are used for hemodialysis. Hemodialysis is a medical procedure that uses a dialysis machine to filter waste and water from your blood in cases of renal failure. So it pretty much does the job that your kidneys used to do. We'll begin with arterial venous fistula. An arterial venous fistula is a channel that's created between an artery and a vein, an artificial channel that's created between an artery and a vein. This is usually done surgically. The most common AV fistula for hemodialysis is the Brescia Cimino fistula, in which the radial artery and cephalic vein are joined together surgically. Another fistula that can be used is ulnar artery to basilic vein. The benefits of arterial venous fistula is that it has the lowest rate of failure and complications as you're using the patient's native tissue. Once the AV fistula is created, you'll have to wait several months for it to fully heal and mature before you can puncture it to use it for hemodialysis. The second type of access device is an arterial venous graft. An AV graft is also created surgically by using a small hollow synthetic tube that connects the artery to the vein. The material typically used for an AV graft is a polytetrafluoroethylene or Gore-Tex tube. Grafts are used as opposed to fistulas when the patient's native vasculature is not suitable for fistula creation. The grafts can be inserted as straight tubes or looped tubes, typically connecting the radial artery to the cephalic, median cubital, or basilic vein. The loop varieties can also connect the proximal brachial artery to the axillary vein, or in the case of a lower extremity, the femoral to great saphenous vein. So waveforms in these grafts and fistulas are going to differ from your typical waveform in the upper extremity. The normal waveform in an upper extremity artery, like the radial artery, is triphasic in nature with a clear spectral window. The waveform in an upper extremity artery can be changed with either momentary ischemia or exercise to change the waveform to a monophasic or biphasic waveform with increased diastolic flow, which would be reactive or active hyperemia. The normal blood flow in an upper extremity vein is usually slightly phasic due to respiratory and or cardiac pulsations. Distal augmentation can cause a sharp increase in velocity, with a return to baseline shortly upon release. In normally functioning grafts and fistulas, you're going to have a low resistant monophasic waveform with increased diastolic flow. The flow may be a little turbulent proximally with spectral broadening. Normal velocities on the arterial or inflow side range between 100 and 400 centimeters per second peak systolic velocity and 60 to 200 centimeters per second for end diastolic velocity. On the outflow or venous side of the graft or fistula, peak systolic velocities range from 30 to 100 centimeters per second. The further away from the graft or fistula you get, the lower the velocity will get and pulsatility as well. Stenosis is quite common at the anastomosis site. However, it has been determined that these stenoses do not adversely affect the graft or fistula function and no association between stenosis and graft occlusion has been found. Accurate velocity measurements to define whether there is stenosis can be a little difficult in fistulas due to the tortuous vessels and variations in vein diameter. The criteria for stenosis in grafts 50% or greater are peak systolic velocity greater than 400 centimeters per second and a velocity ratio greater than 2 to 1 or 3 to 1. The criteria for stenosis in fistulas are very similar. So for the protocol, you're going to want to use a linear probe, high resolution, anywhere from 7 to 12 megahertz will do. You're going to want to perform an upper extremity vascular exam. You want to begin your assessment at the jugular or subclavian vein and work your way down to the fistula or graft site. You're going to want to evaluate the arterial inflow proximal and distal to the anastomosis. You want to assess the site of anastomosis. You're going to want to scan the proximal, mid, and distal sections of the graft or fistula, which is the outflow section. Pay close attention to, pre to the previous puncture sites along the graft or fistulas to rule out pseudoaneurysms or collections. Overall, you're going to want to assess for pseudoaneurysm, stenosis, thrombosis, occlusion, surgical collections, and steel. At each level, you're going to want to take transverse and sagittal grayscale images, images with color Doppler, and images with color Doppler and pulse wave Doppler. That's pretty much it for this sauna quickie. Uh, there's going to be a blog post associated with this that's going to go into a little bit more detail. I want to give a big thanks and a big shout out to Richard Garay. He's the co-author of the blog post. You can follow him on Instagram at Vascular Technology. I'll link to his page in the description and in the blog post. All right, well, thank you. Take care.